Hello, this is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast Podcast. Today I want to talk to you about mold and fungus. It's everywhere, it's all around us, and it's a complicated matter. Today I want to show it to you with a slide presentation. How mold and fungus affects your health. How to recognize and how to eliminate the effects of mold and fungus from your life. Um, I'm Martin Patella, I'm a health coach and I'm CMTA, that's Certified Metabolic Typing Advisor. Uh, I'm working as a health coach at Life Enthusiast. The Certified Metabolic Typing Advisor is a designation that uh, has us understanding a lot about how genetics and food intersect. We understand the biological individuality of people how or why some people gain weight or how or why some people's moods or sharpness of mind or hunger is generated through the combinations of foods. In my earlier life, I also trained as a clinical hypnotherapist and I worked in the high tech industry for many years, lecturing and training people in complicated uh, information technology issues. Many of you already know me, but if you're here the first time, I would just like to share with you that I'm a lot like many of the people who are seeking help. Um, my story started with uh, getting 12 mercury amalgam fillings at age 25 innocently, and it really took me down. It took about 10 years for me to completely reached the bottom. I became allergic, I had leaky gut, I had food problems, and I have uh, essentially crashed. And it took a while for me to give up on my indoctrination. I was much like everyone else, sleepwalking. I believe in professionals. My dad was a veterin veterinarian. I thought that the medical science had it figured out. So I went to the doctors for help. I found out the hard way that they only understood symptom management. They were not trained to ask about what caused this? Why is this happening? They only treated the symptoms. Anyway, about 10, 12 years in, I finally gave up. It was that moment when I say to myself, Martin, darling, you're going to have to figure this out yourself. So I did. I, um, this was before the internet. So I dove into books and libraries and uh, figured it out. It took me some years. But eventually, about uh, five years in, the light bulb went off and I became aware that there is the other side to medicine and that's the biological individuality the the way of treating a person rather than a symptom and i figured out what the cause was and i was able to detoxify myself and in the process of detoxification i reversed all of the problems or most of the problems that I've had. I wouldn't call myself 100% fixed. I'm a cracked jar, as I call it. I mean, I still have some problems and I, I cannot go back to living the way everybody else would be, which is uh, eating pizza and drinking beer. That's just off the table for me. Anyway, I, in the process, I became metabolic typing advisor, and uh, I have been now working at Life Enthusiast for the last 18 years with plenty of practice and guiding thousands of people on their journey from uh, thinking that the pills can help to finally understanding that they cannot. So today, mold and fungus, how it affects us, how we acquire it, and how we can get rid of it. So first of all, what is it? Um, it's, it's not a plant and it's not an animal. It's a different type of a creature altogether. And there are probably more type of molds and fungi in nature on this planet than all of the other species of everything else combined. 
And their job is to decompose things. They are composters of plant material. Well, actually all organic material. In fact, you can throw both uh, old leaves and newspapers and, uh, and animal scraps, like food scraps, into your compost. And these composters will take it all apart. They will turn it into basic organic nutrients. That's mainly the fungi. Mold or yeast is also involved in fermentation. We have tamed it for a couple of food things. One of them is production of alcohol. You can take all kinds of grains, like uh, you take potatoes, you make vodka. You take uh, rye, well, you make rye with wheat. You can make uh, whiskey and with barley, you can make beer. So essentially, uh, alcohol is a mycotoxin. Another example of this is penicillin, the toxin made by a fungus called penicillium is called penicillin and that fungus will fight certain specific bacteria. That's what we have learned. Well, Mr. Fleming back when, when he discovered it, what a, what a keen observer he was, he noticed that on his Petri dish, there was a gap. The bacteria were not growing around the penicillium fungus patch that was in his dish. So we have been working using these, uh, um, these molds to, to help us fight bacteria. Unfortunately, there are side effects. One of the side effects of the environmental fungi and molds is hypometabolic effect. They, they impact our mitochondria. They cause us to be less able to convert food into energy. And uh, most of this stuff arrives to us in the air. It's, it's almost, um, well, it's unexpected. We don't think of it, we don't hear of it. This is not a mainstream issue, but our air, both outdoors and indoors, but especially indoors, carries a lot of dangers. So what about these mycotoxins? The mycotoxins is the toxin produced by the mold, usually in order to defend itself from something else. There, there are thousand or more known and cataloged toxins they all are created by these decomposers. Anyway, the, the most prevalent and most common and most well-researched ones are aflatoxin, that comes to us from corn, peanuts, cotton, and uh, many tree nuts, and okra toxin that comes to us on coffee, in beer, in pulses, as in lentils and peas and beans and then wheat and barley. And then of course, there's the uh, Saccharomyces, the same Saccharomyces that, is, that are used to uh, uh, make uh, beer, you know, to, to uh, ferment the barley to make beer or ferment the fruit to make wine. I mean, you can make grape wine or blueberry wine or alcohol from almost any fruit there is. So how do they affect us? Um, mainly in the nerves. I'll, I'll describe three. The vagus nerve is uh, a nerve that uh, travels from your brain in a meandering way all the way through your body and picks up signals from the autonomic nervous system. It actually uh, manages the uh, balance between your stress side and your re relax repair side between the sympathetic and parasympathetic. So it connects your ha head to your heart and to your gut. It regulates the heart, blood pressure and, and heart rate. And in the gut, it regulates whether you digest or don't digest. And so if you have autonomic dysregulation, 
you will have all kinds of issues, including high blood pressure or maybe low blood pressure. You will have sleep issues like insomnia, not, not being able to go to sleep or waking up. And you will have elimination issues, either constipation or IBS, diarrhea, alternating with constipation. All of that relates back to the vagus nerve. The mast cells, they're richly present in your gut and in your sinuses and also in the, in the vagina. Well, it's in the boys' equipment as well, but less accessible. And the, the mast cells uh, are signaling cells. They react. Their most uh, famous uh, creation is, is, uh, is the signaling that makes you blush or that makes you swell. It has to do with the reaction to stimuli. So, for example, if you eat something and your belly swells fairly soon after having eaten that, that's mast cells. So they will cause blushing, itching, um, rashes, tachy tachycardia, that's um, heart, heart rate going crazy, speedy heartbeat, and skin rashes. Uh, they also, they being mycotoxins, also affect the limbic system. So if the limbic system is out of balance, we end up being hypervigilant, hair trigger, nervy, nervousy. We, we become sensitive to sounds, smells, to visual inputs, and even touch. So to illustrate, like, to sound, you will find uh, people talking irritating or certain music irritating or, uh, uh, I don't know, you walk by somebody who's smoking a cigarette and it will give you a headache or you, you overreact to perfumes and things like that. Or a touch, you can't even stand your own clothes sometimes. Um, dysregulated hormones. Um, that would be the balance between, uh, for example, estrogen and progesterone, which will show itself up in uh, less than pleasant monthly cycles in women. But there, there could be other hormone dysregulation. And the amygdala. Amygdala is the uh, center in your brain that's uh, parked uh, in the side of your head, just by the temple. It's not very big. And it regulates how you respond to stress. And if the amygdala becomes hypervigilant, it will give you an inappropriate or out of context reaction to sensory inputs. Fibromyalgia is one of those types of problems where uh, people will, how do I best say it? It's sort of like a relay switch that's supposed to come on and then come off, signal that something happened and then it stopped happening. But with the um, dysregulated amygdala, the switch comes on and stays on. So this person will just continually be in pain, inappropriate, crazy amount of pain without being able to shut it off. However, uh, we have it in our website. Uh, there are several methods of retraining this Amygdala, one of, one of the methods was the Ashok Gupta's method. You can find it in our podcast uh, series. So how does this represent itself? So imagine that you have been exposed to a lot of mycotoxins and uh, here's how you're going to be perceiving it in your life. You'll have unexplained aches, you will have allergies, and breathing issues like asthma, and you will have thinking problems like brain fog and memory lapses, not remembering why you showed up in a specific room. You may have bronchitis and other ongoing breathing issues, and you will have unexplained fatigue, just low amount of energy or running out of energy in a very short amount of time. I mentioned fibromyalgia, that's 
in its original definition that was mainly soft tissue problems, but it also has been used generically as a, as a bundle name for a grab bag of symptoms that could include anything from headaches to muscle aches to tiredness to uh, emotional problems. Unexplained indigestion, frequent indigestion, that's also possibly fungus caused. Sleeping problems, including insomnia, mood regulation problems, switching from anxiety to uh, anger to depression, a lot of mental illness that uh, these days we uh, experience could be triggered by mycotoxins, by presence of fungus. So nervousness, I mentioned that, right? Like this is the hair trigger nerves, uh, just firing off very quickly. Neuropathy, that's a, essentially a unexplained pain in body parts, legs, feet hands, head, all over. Also numbness, that's also another symptom of the toxicity. Pneumonia, that's, that goes back on the stack of lung problems. Sinus trouble, that's a classic when you hear people talking like this with their nose because their sinus is congested and plugged up. It may well be that they are in fact reacting to a fungal infection in their environment. Skin rashes, Stabbing pain is quite quite an interesting thing. It's as if, well, it's it's a form of nerve signal, right? Like all of a sudden, the uh, fungus will trigger a um, an unexpected nerve signal. So that goes on the same stack as the nervousness and uh, possibly the brain fog. But that's one of those. As is tingling, tingling sensation in various body parts. You could have a tingling nose or tingling cheek or tingling ear or whatever and more these are mostly nerve so I mentioned anxiety already but that's definitely from presence I mean not the only cause but frequently caused by the presence of mycotoxins so buzzing in the air or in the ear but also sort of like an inner buzzing in the head Anxiety and depression, they're from the same stack. This autonomia, I mentioned that in context with the vagus nerve, essentially dysregulation between your uh, autonomy, between your sympathetic and parasympathetic. So you could have blood pressure going too high or too low or, or moods going too, too hot or too cold. <laughs> many, many symptoms related to the autonomic nervous system. Frequent urination, again, presence of fungus will cause you to have this uh, sensation that you need to go urinate, even though the volume may not be very high. Weakness, that goes together with tiredness. Hearing loss. Ringing and tinnitus in the ear, that may well be also fungus-related. fungus, fungus related. Low oxygen, manic, that's the um, opposite of depression in, in the um, mental dysregulation, as is anger and rage. I mentioned the mast cells, that's... that's uh, <sighs> There's, there's such a thing as a mast cell activation syndrome where uh, people can get uh, overstimulated and the mast cells start releasing uh, all kinds of signal molecules that they're inappropriate. Night sweats, I mean, it could be the menopausal estrogen triggered night sweats, but the other ones could be caused by the presence of mycotoxins. OCD, that's uh, obsessive compulsive uh, disorder where uh, we are not able to let go of certain behaviors or ritualistic behaviors, too many rules in life. POTS, that's postural orthostatic, uh, I forget the other two words, the syndrome. It has to do with uh, um, being dizzy on rising, 
essentially your blood pressure doesn't keep up with your rising. It's, it's an effect of ad the adrenal glands not functioning well. Schizophrenia could be actually triggered by the presence of mycotoxins, as can be seizures, tremors, and visual disturbances in your eyes. And so why does this happen? Where does this mycotoxin come into our lives? What's, what's going on here? Well, the, the most common place is where do we spend a lot of time in our homes? The, the fungus can grow. It will grow in places that are a low circulation, stagnant air, high humidity, warm, but doesn't have to be too warm, just you know, warmer than freezing. So it, it will hide in your air ducts. It would be the, uh, especially air conditioning, both in your homes and your cars. And it will eat cellulose. The, uh, the fungus decomposes organic matter. matter. So that would be uh, wood, like the studs in your walls, the plasterboard or sheetrock, because that's coated with paper, your furniture, because that has a frame of wood and oftentimes fabric of uh, organic sort, and of course books because they're made of paper, that's pure cellulose, or rich in cellulose. So that's where the mold will grow. The things that will contribute to uh, things being worse is the quality of air. So when you have formaldehyde um, escaping into your home from either your laminated flooring or from particle board furniture that's going to contribute to the quality of the air in the house. But the most common way you'll find it is in musty basements. Like for example, if you have a porous cinder block brick that has not been properly insulated on the outside, you will have water seeping in through the wall into the basement. Of course, in your laundry room where there's a lot of humidity and wetness, or bathroom, if you don't have them well ventilated with uh, good fans, it's very common for there to be a high level of mold spores in the air. What makes this worse? I, I should explain that the mold is just one of many things, environmental issues that will possibly take down a well-functioning immune system. So. I already mentioned the formaldehyde or uh, acet acetone. I didn't mention that, but that's another one. These, these uh, VOCs, volatile organic compounds that are in the air, will make your life worse. Your immune system will be burdened by it. So the fragrances like the Glade or the uh, scented candle or, or uh, what's it called? Uh, I don't buy it, so I'm not remembering it. But it's it's those sheets that you put in laundry, or uh, or the spray that you spray on furniture to make it smell good, quote unquote. Uh, phthalates from plastic, PFOAs. Those are the uh, Teflon and related um, bands, and mercury that comes to us both uh, in the. Um, <laughs> Mercury comes to us in dental fillings and vaccines and uh, in fish and of course on the air too. Coal burning power plants release mercury into the air. And lead, leads in old lead paints and um, who knows where, where else. Oh yes, in water pipes. Ask people in Flint, Michigan. Well, most North American cities that were uh, built 100, 120 years ago, the water supply lines have uh, uh, iron pipes for the large volume pipes, but the last little bit, the last little pieces, essentially the house branches, 
they were made with lead pipes. So if there is not a specific mineral conditioner added to the water, just like they forgot to add it in flint, all of a sudden the acidic water will start uh, peeling off the uh, coating that's on the inside and the next thing you know you have lead in the water and it's pretty bad news. And of course wet buildings. Wet buildings are the breeding ground for the molds. So if, if you have been flooded that's of course a big issue down in the southern part of the country or if your basement is musty or if you have a crawl space that has uh, wet dirt under it, there probably is going to be a uh, mold growing on the underside of your home. Other ways of um, acquiring these problems. I don't know if you've uh, walked into a uh, large box store and noticed the smell of things the fumigated tropical imports. You have the uh, either unfumigated goods that could uh, be rich in spores or the fumigation itself is pretty toxic. So you get it both ways. Of course, your automobile, if you buy a new one, the plastics will off gas. And if you use uh, industrial cleaners to treat the inside and uh, you will have all kinds of off-gassing happening there. And of course, if you have a fuel, uh, either diesel or, um, or gasoline, inhaling those, uh, those are hydrocarbons. They're not going to do you much good either. Your clothing, <laughs> especially GMO cotton from tropical countries like India and Bangladesh, uh, it's, it's got a lot of toxic material in it. And the dyes that they use are pretty toxic as well. So the instruction that we have for you here is to wash these things with uh, enzyme pretreatment and with borax to try to reduce the, uh, reduce the load. Oh man, this list is just so dramatic, isn't it? Um, okay. Electromagnetic radiation. This is uh, the Wi-Fi. This is the uh, cell phones, cell phone towers, the uh, routers, computers, and uh, wireless devices all around your home. Um, I've already done a whole seminar about this, but may as well mention it here. The, uh, the electronic signal will trigger, it's called voltage-gated calcium channel on all of your cells. I mentioned the vagus nerve earlier in this presentation. The switching between uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic, the uh, EMF will turn on the stress side. So you will, you will become deficient in magnesium and you will have issues of unable to relax, blood pressure goes up, anxiety goes up, all kinds of issues of that sort. And food, glyphosate, the famous Roundup. Farmers have been told by the wonderful agrochemical industry that Roundup is harmless to humans, that it only harms microbes. True in that sense that it doesn't do anything to our cells directly. But wouldn't you know it, we are actually um, carrying a lot of microbes on us, on the surface, and within us in our digestive system. And so when those microbes are harmed, we are harmed with it. It's essentially an antibiotic. In fact, glyphosate was originally patented as an antibiotic. In the process of killing the good microbes, you're promoting fungus. You're promoting a um, decomposition. So when you eat foods that are not organic, that have been sprayed with glyphosate, you're causing yourself harm. So 
eating in fast food restaurants or in all restaurants unless they explicitly tell you that they use only organic foods that's that's what you're doing you're just killing yourself slowly I already talked about the metals in dental work it's not just the mercury it's the nickel as well and some people are even sensitive to the titanium that uh, has been used for for posts so if you're having to do a post, zirconium may be a better choice. Anyway, the metals also are delivered on vaccines. It used to be mercury. Now they switch to aluminum uh, as, a, as the adjuvant, right? Like they are trying to mount an immune response from your immune system. That's why they give you this, this injection. They want you to uh, get the immune system to fire up in response to the to vaccination. Well, the aluminum, go, go look up studies how people with, with Alzheimer's have high aluminum in their brain. And of course, your water could be contaminated, so you better get filtered water rather than just straight from the tap. And the last of the collection that I thought of is uh, tropical travels. When you get into places where there's high humidity, uh, you're very likely going to encounter some forms of spores that, that you don't know yet. And they can be inhaled and ingested, and they can even be absorbed through the skin. Well, so that, that's pretty much the end of my gloom and doom part of the presentation. I would like to now try and talk about what we can do about it. Well, you want to avoid it, right? Like you don't want to be spending time in spaces that have mold spores within them. So when you first enter a place, like this could happen in your own home. Like for example, you go away for a while, and then you come home and you inhale and there it is. I used to live at the coast, Pacific coast in Vancouver. And um, we would go away to visit relatives um, in the interior where the air is dry. And uh, a week or two later, or even a weekend, we'd come back and the first two, three breaths taken in the old place, oh my gosh, I'm smelling the must. And I would also smell the must on my clothes that I took out of the suitcase when I was in the place where there wasn't any. And we would just nod our heads and say, yeah, yeah, that's the coast air. Well, <laughs> we were living in fungus and it was making us less well. So for example, if you enter a hotel room and you first inhale, if it smells musty, it would be a smart thing to go close the door and go ask for a different room. The, um, the exposure is cumulative. Like it, it actually happens over a lifetime. So, um, I mean, we can't really avoid exposure. It's everywhere, but there are levels of it, right? So the less you experience of it, the better. So the, the repeated exposures should be reduced to, to as little as possible. Because if you're having um, infections, if you're experiencing sinus infections, it may well be that you are actually living in an environment that you need to change. You will experience fungal infections in your sinus, um, in the gut that's common, well, and vaginal. Um, oftentimes this is called candida, candida albicans. And what's interesting is that, like for example, you can take uh, nystatin uh, for the uh, vaginal infection or diflucan. And while you're taking it, the symptoms go away. But as soon as you stop taking it, it doesn't take too long before all the symptoms are back. Because you actually need to get rid of the fungus from your gut. Because if it's in your gut, it will reinfect. Um, you know, the, the parent, 
perineal area, it's all one neighborhood. When you have a bowel elimination, it's only inches away from all the other places. It doesn't take long for the fungus to find its way back. Uh, there's a way of testing for it, testing for it, and there's this new-ish, very uh, effective test. So if you're dealing with a health pro health practitioner, your doctor, uh, ask them about a Zoomer test. The Zoomer is quick, affordable, and uh, it usually just takes a nose swab to do it. Here's an interesting thought I want to leave you with: mycotoxins are carcinogenic. That's, that's been proven, like for example, uh, well, no, I want to say this. And antibiotics are mycotoxins, right? Like we started with the penicillin. The penicillin is the mycotoxin of the species penicillium. Well, all the other antibiotics are all mycotoxins of other fungi and mold. So, they all are carcinogenic. We already know that uh, repeated use of antibiotics is associated. I don't know how directly causative it is, probably not directly, but it definitely is correlated with uh, cancers such as colorectal, breast, uh, non Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, liver cancer. So think about it. Think about the exposure. The exposure, not only are you getting exposed by taking the antibiotics for your, for your own use, you also are getting the antibiotics in the food, especially in the meat, if you're eating food that's not organic. So here's the process that I would suggest. You need to understand that there are two two words that should be understood, detox and drainage. Drainage is the natural means by which the cells get rid of things and by which your body eliminates. Detox, I would like to reserve for being more aggressive and binding things to take it out of the body that the body wouldn't be able to eliminate on its own. Anyway, so the process, the sequence of events should be that you first take care of the mold in your environment. That would mean, you know, when you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. Um, it could mean that you stop going to work where the building is contaminated. It could mean that you either mitigate and remediate the house you're in, or it possibly could mean that you actually just sell the place and move on. Some people are so infected that they actually leave, have to leave everything behind. By everything, I mean things that are uh, not cleanable. And deep cleaning is hard and expensive. And usually you cannot do it yourself if you've already become sick, because you can't just inhale it. So you would have to hire people to do it. So the costs of it are high. I often think that it would be easier to just burn the whole house. Anyway, so we first eliminate it from the environment, then we work on the body. Meaning that, I mean, you could go pharmaceutical, you could go with nystatin, diflucan, or stuff like that. But fortunately, we do have also just natural uh, plant-based compounds that nature has evolved. I mean, plants have been fighting with molds and fungi for, for, for eons since beginning, right? Like this is the nature and a dance and interface. So uh, I'll, I'll mention that in just a moment, but things like oregano or, uh, or um, well, that, that comes to mind, number one, but there are others. I'll get to it with my notes. Anyway, so eliminate the fungus from your body. Then you also need to get rid of heavy metals because your body will attract fungus in its attempts to get rid of heavy metals. The heavy metal is, an, is a contamination that we are not evolved to deal with. 
there, there's no effective method for the body to get rid of it, but it tries and it uses decomposers. That would be mold. So you need to get rid of the heavy metals. And uh, I have used zeolite very successfully. And then we need to build the microbiome because we want to have the right mix. And then finally, you may want to eliminate the food that is possibly triggering allergic reactions. What's it going to be? How are you going to do that? The detoxification and cleansing process should be ongoing and you should be considering lymphatic drainage, which you can improve on by first movement because the lymph needs to be pushed up down uh, against gravity. It doesn't have its own pump. So only when you're moving your muscles and when you're moving your body. So walking and rebounding is a good thing. And dry brushing, which would be done with either a, a, a towel or a, um, or a brush. And uh, you brush from the outside toward the center. So you would brush upward on your legs and upward on your arms and upward on your belly. Because the, uh, the lymph connects to the bloodstream up by your clavicles right under your shoulders. The other means would be sweating. So uh, sauna is a wonderful thing because where you, you can just heat your body up to the point where you're profusely sweating. There are also uh, mats, like I've used, used biomats. That's also quite useful. I've used biomats, you know, that's, that's a, um, essentially a heat heated blanket that uh, heats your body up to the point where you're so hot that you're sweating. Um, electric lights, red lights, infrared lights, they, they can um, warm up your tissue, just sunning yourself. Or exercise, if you're strong enough that you can exercise to the point of sweating, it's awesome because sweating will help you eliminate all kinds of things. You would want to have a lot of water because water will help you wash things out. I've heard uh, the solution to pollution is dilution. I love that statement. Anyway, the water should be filtered, structured, and energized. You probably have heard of the prills that we use to, to do that. You want to make sure that your water does not have fluoride and lead, and arsenic, and who knows what else other toxin. And your food, food should be free of herbicides, pesticides, especially glyphosate. These days that really means eat organic. Uh, it's expensive, say people, but in the long run it actually isn't. And if we all get together, if millions of us stop buying the crappy food that they're serving us and instead start buying the real food, more and more farmers will plant organic and the costs will go down. And lastly, oil pulling. This is a method by which we uh, take some oil. I, I personally like coconut oil. Some other oils like grapeseed oil works too. But anyway, a mouthful of oil, maybe like a teaspoon is about the right amount. And you run it through and around your teeth. Five minutes, 10 minutes is probably enough. And then don't swallow, just spit it out, throw it away. The oil will absorb all kinds of toxic stuff out of your mouth, out of the gums and that area. So prevention is important here, of course. So we want to avoid exposure and reduce the contact. Mm -hmm. We want to spend time in sunshine and fresh air. So most of us urban dwellers are challenged that way. We can block the reproduction of the uh, microbes, <coughs> of the fungus. <coughs> we have found that silver, colloidal silver or ionic silver does that, as does iodine. We have found that humic acid helps the body internally to uh, to fight off the um, the fungal reproduction. Biohydrox, we sell it under the trade name Amazing Soak. That's a oxygen supplement. When you either bathe in it or spray it in your mouth, you are 
helping to kill off all the microbes. And oregano is one of the herbs that's really important. Does a really good job of that. As far as uh, the lungs health, I mean, I can't think of a more important time to talk about that than now <clears throat> with the um, current ongoing virus, which I personally am concerned that it's not just a virus problem. Anyway, if you spend more time with trees in parks, by lakes, or especially by the ocean, you will be inhaling more negative ions, which are very beneficial. And uh, you should be using high quality air filters because the small particulates are very harmful to your lungs. Uh, in fact, they may be the major cause of people having lung problems. UV lights will sterilize the air. Ion generators will help to add negative ions. That all helps to uh, get the small particulates out of the air. I already mentioned the silver and hydrox. They can be inhaled and uh, they will work in the lungs very eff efficiently to block the uh, reproduction of unwanted microbes or micro creatures, mold and fungus. In the gut, we want to build the microbiome. So probiotics, eat sauerkraut, drink kombucha, miso is great, there's tempeh and there's uh, kimchi. All of the fermented stuff is useful. But these microbes need to be fed. And they need to be fed prebiotics, which those are, that's root vegetables. So uh, feeding root, ve root vegetables is a good thing. FOS, fructo oligosaccharides, these are the complex <coughs> starchy compounds that, uh, that the, micro the beneficial microbes live on. Humic and fulvic acid is also important because it will help you keep your, uh, the balance of the microbes working well. It's sort of like a software almost. Those molecules, when present in the gut, will help the microbial terrain to function better. And eating more fiber is a great thing. And eating more herbs, like you know the thyme and uh, basil and uh, I don't know, supply our own list. <clears throat> in fact, we sell a whole bunch of herb oils by the company called North American Herb and Spice. Look it up. Um, anyway, the herbs are very helpful in helping to manage the uh, microbial terrain in your body. What feeds the wrong stuff, what fear feeds the fungus, are starches, which, of course, that would be uh, wheat, rye, barley, rice, white potato, well, all the potato. Those are really the foods that feed the um, fungus the most. And industrial dairy is questionable. If you could get your hands on raw, unpasteurized dairy, then probably no problem, especially if it's sheep or goat. But these days, that's pretty hard to get. Things that we know that work. Here's the list of the spice oils. Oregano, rosemary, thyme, clove, cinnamon, olive ear, that's actually olive leaf extract, tea tree oil, orange, lemon oil, also uh, extracts from plants, quercetin, curcumin, resveratrol, and estazantin. So we sell products that contain these. Some, like astaxanthin, is available on its own. Resveratrol, famously from red wine, but it's really a pigment in many other, other products as well. There are other plants as well. Elagitanins um, from seeds. Cannabidiol from hemp. Milk thistle, that's a famous liver cleanser. Um, high pectin apple fiber. 
Like you can make your own by taking apples and stewing them. Like you can just lightly cook apples, stewed apples, maybe with cinnamon. Or you can get high pectin apple, high pectin apple fiber from us if you want. Lecithin uh, is a universal emulsifier, mainly the phosphatidylcholine that it contains. If you're in a real serious trouble, you may need to have your doctor give you injected phosphatidylcholine. But if, uh, if you're just building health, lecithin would be probably helpful. Bitters will help build your bile. So bitter foods like uh, chicory leaf, dandelion leaf, arugula, endives, you know, bitter tasting things in your salad. They're great. We also sell uh, Dr. Christopher Shade's bitters. If you're interested in that, the brand is Quicksilver Scientific. L-carnitine is very helpful uh, with your liver. Charcoal is excellent for absorbing things. It's a binder. Uh, the uh, black gold product that we sell is charcoal and humic. Clays, zeolite, we offer zeolite as well. Uh, what else could you do? You could use ozone, medical ozone. We don't offer that, but certainly can vouch for it. Ozone can be insufflated rectally or vaginally, or you could maybe get uh, ozonated oil and use it on your skin. Hydrogen peroxide, same idea, just supplying loose oxygen, as is biohydrox, that's the amazing silk I mentioned, and daylight, that's uh, GT uh, uh, Gaia Thera. We have the product that also supplies a huge amount of free hydrogen and free oxygen. And uh, you can look up indole 3 carbonyl very helpful for uh, people who are struggling with fungal infections. Uh, on screen, I'm showing a few samples of uh, products that we have. Fungus Ease, I didn't mention that, but that's a herbal mix that will help uh, uh, eliminate fungal infections without the die-off. And I should have mentioned die-off. When you overdo the detoxing, the uh, fungus that is dying is leaving behind um, the toxins and they can make you feel terrible. Orega resp, that's the uh, oregano blend. That bucket that you see on the screen, that's a uh, picture of the air filter. We sell uh, air filters by a company called Air, air Pura. These are industrial grade filters. They're not cheap. They start at like seven or eight hundred dollars, all the way up to twelve hundred. But that's pretty much what's needed if you have a problem. And um, if you want, you can go to the uh, Candida Yeast and Fungus product category on the website, life-enthusiast.com. You can get in touch with us at 866-543-3388 or if you need to dial internationally, 775-299-4661. Thank you. This is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast Podcast, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. <laughs>